Welcome back for part 11 of the Marcadini Crochet Along. This week we have a couple of new stitches to try, so you can get out your swatch and we'll practice that now. So we're going to work some swatch practice. Today we're going to be learning the cross stitch for Tunisian crochet. So I've worked a row of TSS on top of my last swatch sample. And if you wish, you can work a row of that to make it easier to start the cross stitch. So for the cross stitch, we're gonna skip this first vertical loop and insert under the next vertical loop, pull up a loop like a TSS. And then we're gonna cross back or put our hook back under that loop that we skipped like a TSS and pull up a loop. And you can see how these two loops crisscross over top of each other. So skip a loop, pull up a loop in the next, come back to the skipped loop and pull up a loop. So fairly simple stitch to learn. Again, you'll want to be careful not to have your loops too tight as it's a little bit hard to work backwards into the skip stitch then but also not making them too loose and sloppy or you'll get extra holes in your work. Okay, and so for our purpose of learning the stitch, if we have an extra loop left over, we'll just work that as a TSS and then through the border stitch to pick up and then work the return pass. So regular return pass for these cross stitches. Now if you're working this in a pattern with a chart, it will show you clearly um, how to work the second row. Okay, so for the second row, we'll skip this first loop there, pick up our loop in the next stitch, come back to the skip loop and pick it up. So we're working our cross stitches in exactly the same placement as we did the previous row. Whenever you're walking, working this cross stitch in a pattern, it will clearly tell you either in the words or in the chart if the cross stitches go on top of each other or if they're staggered. So for this row, I'm showing to work them on top of the previous row. We'll work our return pass and take a look at what it looks like. You can see these cross stitches are stacked on top of each other like so. You'll sort of see how it would make sort of ribbing or columns of the cross stitches. What you can do as well is alternate the rows. So for this third row I'll show you. So instead of skipping this first loop we'll work on regular TSS in the first loop. Then we'll skip the second, pick up in the next stitch and come back to the skip loop. So our cross stitches will be alternate to how we did the row before. We'll work a couple rows like this to show you what that effect will be like. So this time we won't have the TSS at the end of the row as we put it at the front of the row. Pick up the border and whoops work the regular return pass. So then you can see from the previous row to the row we just did, we're always we're starting to get more of a diagonal look as opposed to the column look when we had the cross stitches on top of each other. So I'll work one more row with you. This one we'll go back to how we did it the first time. We'll skip that first loop, pick up the next, and work our cross stitches down the row. And when we work these cross stitches, in the alternating rows as I have done, 
it will make that diagonal design. Okay, so the patterns will tell you which way they want that to be worked. You can go ahead and work as many rows of this cross stitch as you want to feel comfortable with this stitch and to be ready to use it in our block. We'll be starting with block 41, which is an interesting mix of some cables and then four different stitch patterns. So we will be starting with one of our new stitches, that cross stitch. So hopefully you've done your work on the practice swatch for that. So for placement of block 41, we will be working on top of block 28. That's the large heart block. So counting over from this vertical line on the edge, we will count over 30 loops and place a marker. And then four more loops on the 34th loop, we will place another marker. For block 41, we want to join behind, just past that first marker. And then starting at that first mark stitch, we will pick up in the back 30 loops across. And then with our connection to the vertical line, we'll have 32 loops on our hook for block 41. So once you've picked up all those loops, you can work the return pass for that. And then I will help you get started with row two. So before we work row two, I just want to go over our symbols chart as there's a few more on this one than we usually have. We're familiar with the simple stitch and the purl stitch and the knit stitch. And then just a reminder that this is the twisted knit stitch, the reverse stitch and the full stitch. We haven't done that for a little while, so I'll show you how to do that again. And then this is our new symbol for that cross stitch. And then we can see we have a couple different kinds of cables as well on this chart. So looking at row two, we're going to start with our twisted knit. So the side part of the square will be the twisted knit stitch. We have this inner triangle of the cross stitch. The full stitch is on that far side. And then at the top part triangle is the reverse stitches with these cables creating a nice division between the different stitch patterns. So working row two and three together, we will have three out of those four special stitches for this block. And then I will come back again at row 16 to remind you of the reverse stitch. So for row two, we're going to start with a twisted knit. Then we'll work our cable stitches of two knit and a purl and work the cable. And then we have a number of cross stitches before we work another cable and ending with a full stitch then to start that side triangle. So beginning row two with the twisted knit. So remember the knit stitch, we go between the two loops, the front and the back loop, the twisted knit, which we just push that front loop over before we insert our hook between the front and the back. So sometimes I use my hook. Sometimes you need to use your thumb or finger to push the front loop over and then insert between the front and the back loop to pull up our loop for one twisted knit. Then we do two regular knit stitches and a purl stitch. And I'll demonstrate the forward pass cable. So you take those three loops off, the knit stitches fall to the front, put the purl back on your hook, and then put across the knit stitches and put them back on your hook for our first cable. We'll work 11 of the cross stitches and that uses 22 stitches. So what we do is we'll skip this next loop, we'll insert like a TSS on the next loop to pull up a loop, and then we'll come back to the skipped stitch and insert like a TSS and pull up a loop there. So you can see those two loops cross over like an X underneath. So hopefully you've practiced this on your swatch and are quite familiar with this cross stitch. So we will work 11 cross stitches, which should be a total of 22 more loops that we pick up. So I have done four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, and eleven cross stitches which should leave four loops on the row. We'll work our next cable, which is a purl, two knit, and then a full stitch. Remember the full stitch goes in between the, the loops, in that space in between loops to pull up a loop. And each row we will alternate. So this first row I worked in front of the loop. The next row you will work after the loop so I don't pick up one on the other side of this loop, but on the next row I will, but I'll work that with you to remind you of that. And then we do our connection, 32 loops on the hook. We'll do the return pass, so taking off that full stitch. Now if you worked the forward pass cable, you can just do a regular return pass here. This cable I'm working to remind you in the return pass, so we take the four loops off our hook, put the two knit on the hook, cross the purl and our working loop back on. And then we'll just work our return pass for the remainder of this row. For row two. Now working row three, we will start with two twisted knits. So pulling that front loop over to insert our hook between the front and the back loop. The second one is a little bit tricky as it's that crossed purl stitch. So again, that front loop you want to move over to insert our hook for the twisted knit. Then we will work our two knit stitches for the cable and a purl stitch and work the cable. Then we should have nine, no, we'll have 10 of those cross stitches. So skipping the one, pull up a loop, go back and pull up another loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten of those cross stitches. which should leave five, one, two, three, four, five loops. So we're going to work our cable. So we do a purl stitch and then the two knit stitches. Remove from the hook, put the knit back on, cross the purl. And then to end row two, we have two full stitches. Now remember the first row I worked in front of the stitch so the second row, I'm going to work past the stitch. So the stitch we're working past is that crossed one. So in this hole, we'll pick up a loop and then between our last hole and the border stitch there, we want to pick up a loop for our full stitch and make our connection and work the return pass. So I'm on row 16 here and I just wanted to remind you how to work the reverse stitch there. I've worked my 11 twisted knit and my first cable ready for the reverse stitch to get us started on that fourth triangle of the different stitch pattern for this square. 
So just a reminder, the reverse stitch, we are working like a TSS, but from the back side. So it, it will be a little bit trickier because we're working on those crossed stitches from the cable from the previous row, but you'll find the back loop and work under that as a reverse stitch. So there's two reverse stitches in a row there, and then you'll just complete the row with the cable and the full stitches. So then each row hereafter, you will be increasing the amount of the reverse stitches on each of the row to fill in that top triangle. So you can go ahead and work through to the end of row 27, as well as make the bind off row for this square. So at the end of block 41, you'll want to make sure to do your bind off row. And then we will come back down to the bottom of this block and starting at that second marker, we will join in the back, picking up the four loops across. So we'll work over top of those bind off stitches, picking up the four loops and making our 27 rows for the vertical line. We will not bind off the vertical line and working from there, we'll pick up the four loops again, plus the 30 across the top of this block, always picking from behind and make your connection so you'll have 36 loops on your hook and then work those three rows for the horizontal line. And you can go ahead and bind off that horizontal line as well. So make sure you do that bind off row after your horizontal line on top of our first block for this part. Then before we work the next block, we want to mark some stitches on this horizontal line. So starting from the left side, we will count over 13 stitches and place a marker, or 13 loops. And then on the 17th loop, we will also place a marker. And then on the fifth loop from the right edge, we will place our third marker. And then for block 42, we want to join in behind this first marker. We'll pick up the 13 loops across and make our connection for 15 loops on the hook. And you can go ahead and work the first two rows plus pick up the stitches for the third row. So the first row is our foundation row, then we're going to work with one purl, three TSS across, ending with a purl stitch before the connection, and we'll pick up those loops for row three as well. In the return pass of row three is when we start the pattern for this particular block. And we used this, it's that three together stitch to make that open or lace work pattern. We used it back in block 12. So I'll work rows three and four with you to remind you of how to use that three together stitch. And then I'll let you finish all the way to row 27. So I've picked up all my loops for row three. 15 loops are on the hook. We'll yarn over and pull through those first two loops. And then these next three loops we're going to do as a three together. So we chain one first, and then we pull through our working yarn and the three loops. So pull through four and chain one. And that's how we work that three together. Then we'll take off the next stitch, which is the purl stitch. And then the three TSS, again, we chain one, take off those three together, chain one. Do the purl stitch, chain one, take off those three loops, chain one. We'll work off the purl stitch and the border stitch. Okay, so you can either think of it as I did there of the loops that you're taking off, or if you're thinking of what you pull through, it's four loops because of the loop that's already on our hook. But you can see once we finish the return pass, how we have these open or lace sections with those three together stitches. Now in the next row, we need to be careful how we work or how we pick up our loops. So for row four, we'll start with that purl stitch. Then we pull up a loop in that chain space or in that hole. And then on top of the cluster in that loop, sort of that closing loop on the three together, we'll insert our hook there to pick up the next loop and then in that chain one space. And that's how we get our three loops from the three together back on our hook. Make a purl stitch, and then we'll do the same thing. Pick up a loop in the chain one space 
on top of the three together or the cluster. Oops, I grabbed an extra loop. There we go. Pull up a loop and in the chain one space. Work the purl stitch. Pick a loop in the chain space on top of the three together cluster and in the chain space and finish the row with a purl stitch before we make our connection. Then row four will just have a regular return pass to complete that. So just watch the chart carefully every time you come to this. So for row six, you'll pick up your loops and we work the pattern or the three together in the return stitch or in the return pass. And we alternate with three in this row and two in that row, three and two and so on. So you can go ahead and finish up this pattern for block 42 and you can work the bind off row once you're finished all 27 rows. So at the end of block 41, 42 rather, at the end of block 42 you'll work your bind off row to complete that. Then you'll come back down to the second marker, join in back of that loop, working over the bind off stitches you'll pick up the four loops across and make our vertical line the 27 rows up the side of block 42. Then for block 43 you will come down to this last marker here join in back pick up your 13 loops across make your connection for 15 loops on the hook. The Tunisian bobble stitch we are going to demonstrate now. I've worked a row of TSS for my first row we're going to TSS in the first stitch. Then to make the bobble stitch, we're going to yarn over, and instead of working as a TSS, we're gonna work this as a knit stitch, so we go through both the front and the back loops between those two to pull up a loop. Then we'll yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over again, into the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And one more time, yarn over, into the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then we should have three loops that we've picked up in this one stitch. So we have our border stitch, the TSS, and then the three loops will yarn over, pull through all three of those loops to close, to make a bobble, or it's sort of like a cluster stitch and then working in the next stitch, we'll re work regular TSS. And for this purpose, we'll pick up three loops as regular TSS. And you can see how that bobble is raised and sticking out from the other stitches. So we'll work another bobble, yarn over, insert your hook as a knit stitch, so between the front and back loops, yarn over, pull through two. So these three stitches we're making are like a Tunisian double stitch with the yarn over first before we pick up our loop and then a yarn over pull through two and then again you're going to pull through the three loops yarn over pull through three loops to close that bobble and TSS in three. One, two, and three. So we'll make one more bobble together, so yarn over, work knitwise into that next stitch to pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. We'll do that two more times. And then yarn over and pull through three loops. And TSS in the last three stitches and pick up your border loop. Then for return pass, it's just a regular return pass. Just yarn over and pull through two all the way down the row. Okay, so this next row we're just going to work straight TSS stitches and you can see how we have a regular loop at the top of that bobble stitch to work our TSS under. 
And once we finish this row of TSS, you'll be even more clearly able to see those bobble stitches that we made. And regular return pass too with that TSS stitch. Now for the next row, if we want to work more bo bobbles, it'll work well to stagger them. So I'm going to TSS in the first three stitches and then work the bobble in the next stitch. So over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through three. And TSS in the three and so on down the row. So you can go ahead finishing this row with the bobbles and then working a TSS row after that. And if you want to practice some more rows, you can keep doing that alternating as I did between these first two sets of bobbles. So you can go ahead and work that until you're comfortable. So when we're completed this block here, we want to join at our last marker and pick up the 13 loops across, making the connection for 15 loops on our hook, and we'll work the 27 rows for this block. Just following the chart carefully and working these bottle stitches as we practiced on our swatch as they come up. Then you'll do the bind off row as well, join in back, pick up the 30 loops across, remembering not to pick up the border loops on either of these blocks. <clears throat> 30 loops and you'll have 32 loops on your hook once you've made the connection. Work the three rows of the horizontal line and a bind off row. So for block 44 you will join in back just past that 30th loop, pick up your 30 loops across, make the connection for 32 loops on your hook. I have the first three rows worked just showing you the chart here. Um, so the first row is our foundation row. And then you will see these white squares that are blank. So if they're a blank, plain white square, you're just going to ignore that square. What is happening when we get to row five is that we're making an increase two times. So those white squares show where the increase will fall once we get to row five. But then following that, we're going to decrease as well. So you'll see the rest of the pattern has those extra blank squares to show that there's been an increase and then a decrease. So just a reminder, if it's a white blank square, you just ignore that. It's just an aid to showing that there will be increases later on. So you can go ahead and work rows one, two, and three. You're wanting to pay attention to where we do these two together stitches and then in the return pass. So it'll be a chain one according to our chart up here. So depending on which direction or which color they are. So we have a dark blue, a red, and then black ones. The blue and the red ones, there's a chain one either after the two together or in front of the two together. But when we get to these decreases, there's no chain one. And those ones will be used after we've made the increase and then wanting to decrease again. So you work the first three rows, one, two, and three, and I will join you to show you rows four and five, and uh, I'll show row six as well. So for row four, we will start with two purl stitches, one and two. And then we had made two together stitch the row before. So we will work under the two together to pick up our next loops, loop, and then in that chain one space to pick up the next loop. Followed by five purl stitches. One, two, 
three, four, and five purl stitches. Okay, then on the chart we have the two blank squares, so we just ignore those. And the next stitch then will be picked up, knit stitch. Two more blank squares, ignore that. Followed by four purl stitches. One, two, three, and four. And then we've reached our next two together stitch, so there's a chain one space first to pick up a loop, and working under the two together to pick up the next loop, and four more purl stitches. One, two, three, and four. We'll ignore the, the white squares on the chart, work a knit stitch, Ignore the white squares. Work five purl stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we've reached the last two together stitch of the row. We have the chain one space first to pick up a loop and then under both loops of the two together to pick up the next loop, and ending the row with two purl stitches. And making our connection to the next row up on the vertical line, 32 loops on our hook. Then we will start the return pass. Now the return pass is where those two together stitches happen, so we need to watch that carefully. We will take off the two purl stitches and then work the chain one, two together. Take off the next five purl stitches and the knit stitch and the four purl stitches and then we're at the next place to work our two together And again, that's a chain one first, then work the two together. Take off the four purl stitches and the knit stitch. And take off the five purl stitches. Three, four, five. And then we're going to work the two together first and then a chain one. And then finish the return pass. And that's row four. So now we're going to work row five together and where we have these knit stitches we're going to work our increase. So I'll help you with that in a minute. So row five we start with those two purl stitches again. One and two. Pick up a loop in the chain one space and pick up a loop on the two together and five purl stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we've reached that knit stitch where we're going to work the increase. So the increase is a knit stitch first, yarn over, back into the same stitch for another knit stitch, yarn over, back into the same stitch for a third knit stitch. So instead of just picking up one loop there, we have picked up five loops. So that is why we have those extra four blank squares at this part of the pattern. Then continuing regularly with a purl stitch in four, one, two, three, four, pick up a loop in the two together and the chain one space, and four more purl stitches. One, two, three, and four. 
Then we've reached the next knit stitch, so we'll work another increase. So knit stitch in there, yarn over, another knit stitch, yarn over, and a third knit stitch. Then purl in the next five stitches. One, two, three, oops, four, and five. Then we've reached our two together stitch and pick up in the chain one space. And then finish the row with two purl stitches and our connection. And ready to work our return pass. So we take off the two purl stitches. Then we'll work the two together first, chain one. And take off the five purl stitches. And then we'll have reached where we made that increase. And we're just going to do regular return pass through all five of those loops that we picked up. So one, two, three, four, and five. So it may ruffle out a little bit and that's okay. We will be decreasing soon enough. Then we take off the four purl, three, four, and reach the next where we make a two together, chain one, and take off the four purl stitches, and take off all five of those increase loops, two, three, four, and five, and take off the five purl, and then work a chain one and a two together and take off the last two purl stitches and the border stitch to complete row five. And then row six is where we start making our decreases already. So I'll show you that and then let you work the rest of the chart on your own. So starting with two purl stitches again for row six. Pick up on the two together and in the chain one. Five purl stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. Then we've reached those five stitches where we did the increase, so those five loops. So we want to decrease those, but we'll do that on the return pass. So we're going to work a knit stitch in each of these five as we're pulling up our loops. This is four and five knit stitches. And it's four purl, one, two, three, and four. We'll pick up that chain one space. And the two together stitch, and four more purls, one, two, three, and four. And we've reached the increase, so we'll knit in each of those next five. One knit, two, three, four, and five knit. Purl stitch in five, one, two, three, four, and five. Pick up a loop in the chain one, make the 
the two together, pick up that loop, and purl in two. One, two, making our connection, and starting our return pass. So we take off the two purl stitches, then we'll do a two together, no, nope, this time we'll do a chain one, and a two together. Okay, so we're going to be working a decrease now once we get to where we made those increases. So we're just going to do the return pass for four purl stitches. So one, two, three, and four. On this last purl stitch, we're gonna pull through the purl stitch and take the first of the knit stitch off. We do not want to chain one here because we do want to decrease the number of loops. So I pulled through the working loop in the next two loops to make a decrease. Then we'll take off three knit stitches and then we'll decrease that last knit with that first purl. So yarn over, pull through the working loop and the next two loops to decrease. Then we'll have three purl stitches. Work the chain one and two together, and four purl stitches, two, three, four, and then with this last purl stitch, sorry, should have only been three purl stitches here. There we go. And then with this last purl stitch and the first knit stitch, we'll make that decrease there. Take off three knit and work another decrease and then four purls, two, three, and four. Then we'll work the two together, chain one, and finish the return pass. So that is to the end of row six, showing you how to do those increases and then start the decreases. So as you follow your chart on row seven, we will have another set of decreases in that return pass. Just be careful as you're picking up your loops for row seven that you go under both of those loops where we made the decrease on row six return pass. Okay, and then watching in the return pass of row 10 where we have that three together stitch with the chain one on either side. So I'll let you go ahead and finish working this chart, all the remaining rows for a total of 12 rows, and you can work the bind off row as well. And then to finish off this week, we're going to join uh, down here on the far edge to pick up our four loops and make the connection for six loops on our hook and work our vertical line, 27 rows up here, the three rows by the horizontal line, and then beside our final block. We do want to bind off this vertical line. And again, we won't put the horizontal line as our border will be attached to the top. And that's it for part 11.